world's highest waterfall drops more than 900 meters down the face of a remote plateau in South America. Vast tracts of land here remain completely unexplored. Shrouded mountaintops hide the world's oldest rocks. And among those rocks dwell mysterious creatures more ancient than the dinosaurs. For centuries, legendary rivers of gold and fields of precious stones have lured explorers and adventurers here. Located in the southeastern corner of Venezuela, this Eden is a vast group of plateaus known to the local people as Tepuis. Mount Roraima is a giant flat-topped mountain located where the boundaries of Brazil, Venezuela and Guyana meet. It exists in isolation, a misty summit cut off from the surrounding landscape by sheer, breathtaking cliffs. This giant block of sandstone is called a tepui, and it stands in one of the least known regions on Earth. And here, in gullies and crevices, among tortured rock shapes, strange animals and plants found nowhere else on Earth cling precariously to life. When Im Turn and his party reached the top, they entered a surreal world. The explorer wrote about it in his journal. All around us were rocks, seeming to defy every law of gravity. Countless caricatures of faces and animals and unexpected objects. The landscape on the summit of Roraima has not changed since Im Turn's ascent nearly 120 years ago. In fact, it has probably changed very little in the last million years. But the only dinosaurs he found in this lost world were these fantastic prehistoric structures made of stone. Im Turn was exhausted and his party had run out of food, so they only stayed on the summit for a few hours. But during that brief time, Im Turn realized that the plants and animals surrounding him were unlike any he had ever seen before. The bleak, windswept plateau was a paradise, full of exotic plants and flowers. But they all had something in common. They were varieties of plant suited to a harsh and ancient environment. Among them, he discovered several species of carnivorous plant, including the sinister insect-eating pitcher plant. Even if there were no dinosaurs, in turn realized that this truly was a lost world, one worthy of further investigation. Spectacular sinkholes, like these on a tepui called Sare Sarenama, could now be seen. Each of the 300 meter wide holes contains an isolated miniature forest, home to many unique species. It's a common observation by those who set foot on Tepuis, even among the local people. One feels oppressed, like an intruder in a hostile place. At the top of the mountain, there are vast rivers, stained gold by plant tannins. Adrian suspects that these rivers of gold may be what convinced Angel to attempt a landing here. Adrian reflects on his predecessor as he makes his way towards the world's highest waterfall. Angel Falls, named after the man who first discovered it. Here on the top of Devil Mountain, I have a strange, eerie feeling of time standing still. This place really does feel lost in time, unchanged and untouched for millions of years. Watched by strange rock sentinels, 
I follow Angel's Golden River to where it plunges over the cliff. It was at Altana that Adrian first discovered the origin of the Tepoese. These ancient tunnels are the oldest caves in the world. They were once part of an underground river system. At the time, all land here would have been at the level of Altana's summit. To reach the caves, we descended for almost 1,000 feet down the wall of Altana. The scale was unbelievable. The ledge outside the cave had seemed tiny from the plain, but was covered by trees and boulders. The cave itself was huge, passing from one side of the mountain to the other, with a central chamber reminiscent of a cathedral dome. It's difficult to say when water last flowed through these tunnels but they were formed some three billion years ago, before life appeared on this planet. It takes several hours to fly from Altana to Roraima in a small plain, but once upon a time, their summits were connected. At that time, South America was joined to West Africa. As the continents drifted apart, enormous upheavals began to break up a huge sandstone massif. This is what formed the individual Tepoese. Outside the rocky labyrinth, the summit of Roraima has areas of flat rock and shallow, boggy meadows. It's here that most of the plant life is to be found. To survive here, plants have to be adaptable. This Stegolepis, for example, has no permanent roots, and its twisted form indicates it has led a nomadic existence, moved from place to place by flash floods. Rainwater, which collects in deep pools, is channeled along furrows in the rock surface, slowly eroding the earth. Erosion has also revealed layers of quartz crystals on some parts of the plateau. The quartz may explain a local legend that Roraima contains fields of diamonds. The Tepoese are an exotic botanical paradise, and almost every plant here is found only on Roraima. They have just shallow soil or tiny rock crevices to cling to, and temperatures on the plateau can soar and then drop to freezing. Yet somehow, many species of fragile, colorful flower thrive here. In order to cope with nutrient-poor soils, Carnivorous plants like the sundew supplement their diet by trapping and digesting insects. The red color of the leaves attracts the insect, which becomes trapped by the sticky tentacles. The victim's movement as it struggles to escape is what triggers the leaf to close around it. Another carnivorous species, Heliamphora, has bucket-shaped pitchers that collect rainwater. Like the sundew, the red color attracts its insect prey. The insect is safe until it crawls onto the slippery inner surface of the pitcher. When it does, it will fall in, drown, and be digested by enzymes produced by the plant. Inside the pitcher, downward pointing hairs ensure there is no escape for the victim.
Just as certain plants are peculiar to the Tepuese and often to a single mountain top, many birds here are also unique species. For the most part, the birds that live here are seed eaters and nectar feeders, who over centuries have adapted to this hostile environment. There is one very special animal on Roraima, a creature so ancient that it predates the dinosaurs. The black frog, called Oreo frinella, is more closely related to African species than any in South America. So it has probably lived in this region since before the continents separated. As the ancient mountain mass broke up into isolated blocks, the black frog was trapped on this summit and adapted to its new, harsh habitat. The frog was discovered in 1895, when the first biologists came to Roraima. When picked up, it tucks itself into a ball and becomes motionless. The frog can neither hop nor swim and has opposable toes which help it cling to slippery rock surfaces. When it's cool, its black color helps it to keep warm. If it's hot, it either finds shade or immerses its body in running water. Because of its inability to swim, many of these primitive frogs have probably been washed off the summit by flash floods. <laughs> <laughs> 